In this video, we show the differences in end expiratory lung pressure and expiratory flow bias between three oscillating PEP devices, the VPEP and two competitors. We demonstrate inspiration and expiration through the VPEP using a lung box featuring a porcine lung. Note how the lungs are inflating and deflating. There's a manometer in line to measure pressures from the lung box. The lung box is connected to a computer showing flow loops. End expiratory lung pressure, or EELP, can demonstrate the increased functional residual capacity, or FRC, of the lung. FRC is the amount of volume contained in the lung at the end of a resting exhalation. Assuming an ordinarily compliant lung, FRC should increase as EELP is increased. Therefore, any increase in EELP would theoretically benefit a low FRC, such as a patient with post-op atelectasis. Also, as FRC is increased, there is a higher chance of moving air past mucous obstructions through collateral ventilation channels, which would help mobilize secretion cephalid. Let's look at the VPEP connected to the lung box to examine the EELP. As we zoom into the manometer, notice that the EELP is approximately 6 to 8 centimeters H2O. Next, we set up the lung box with a competitive oscillating expiratory pressure device. Notice that the visual FRC is less. Also notice how the EELP is about 1 centimeter H2O compared to the 6 to 8 centimeters H2O for the VPEP. Lastly, we set up the lung box with another competitive OPEP device. The visual FRC is also less. Now, the EELP is registering about 1 to 2 centimeters H2O, also lower than the VPEP. Flow bias is defined as the difference between peak inspiratory and peak expiratory flow rates during spontaneous breathing. If peak expiratory flow exceeds the peak inspiratory flow, then an expiratory flow bias is said to exist. An expiratory flow bias will tend to move secretions cephalid or toward the oropharynx. Just like a cough, sufficient secretion clearance will always require the presence of an expiratory flow bias. Returning to the VPEP setup with the lung box, we can examine the flow loops on the screen. Notice that the peak inspiratory flow is about 110 liters per minute. Now, we see that the peak expiratory flow is about 140 liters per minute. This example demonstrates an expiratory flow bias of 30 liters per minute, which would move airway secretions toward the oropharynx to be coughed out by the patient. Next, we compare the flow loops with a competitive OPEP device. As we zoom in on the flows, notice that the peak inspiratory flow is about 150 liters per minute. Now, the peak expiratory flow is 100 liters per minute. With the peak expiratory flow of 100 liters per minute and peak inspiratory flow of 150 liters per minute, we have a negative expiratory flow bias. In this case, it's an inspiratory flow bias that would move secretions caught at toward the periphery of the lung. Lastly, we compare the flow loops with the other competitive OPEP device. As we zoom in on the flows, notice that the peak inspiratory flow is about 100 liters per minute. The peak expiratory flow is also around 100 liters per minute. With nearly equal peak expiratory and peak inspiratory flows, the resulting expiratory flow bias is zero. In this case, there would be no net movement of secretions one way or the other. This lung box demonstration shows that the VPEP has by far the greatest end expiratory lung pressure and the greatest expiratory flow bias, which drives secretion clearance. For more information, visit www.drburtonhpi.com.